Welcome to another day of rebuilding my playing. So I took Sunday off, which was really, really great. And then we started classes on Monday. I had a nice full day at work, came home, had a little bit of a headache, thought I'd just lay down for a little bit, and that was the rest of my night. <laughs> so I ended up missing two days. But you know, I'm not gonna feel badly about it. You just have to listen to your body. This is a big part of, of this process and, and working through injury and to come back from injury and to avoid injury. We do really have to listen to our bodies. And so after a long day of work, if you fall asleep for the rest of the night, these things happen. At any rate, it's great to be back in the chair today. I did two online lessons today and I'm actually super grateful that I've been making these practice videos because they're gonna be very helpful to my students. Um, even with using the right Zoom settings and adding in clean, clean feed, you know, it is just really hard to um, capture that perfect sound. And so it'll be nice to be able to refer to these videos um, that are recorded and filmed in high enough quality that they can be useful um, to students as they're developing their concepts of sound, but also because I'm doing fundamental things. And rather than demonstrating these a ton in lessons very poorly over Zoom, I can just refer to these videos. So all things happen for a reason, but I do want to do just what I call, what I refer to as a chromatic tuning, where I just play every note on my bassoon to kind of see where the reed is sitting. And so I do this with my tuner on, but not my metronome. My goal is to play the note in tune. As soon as it's in tune, I move on to the next note. And I'm just checking to see where the reed is sitting. If I'm having to adjust um, every single note a ton, then I know I need to make some changes to my reed. If I'm just doing minor adjustments, well, it's a bassoon. Every note kind of has to be adjusted anyways, so I won't be too worried about that. But if I'm finding in general I'm sitting quite sharp or quite flat, then that's an indication it's time to either adjust the reed or to switch reeds. So here we go, chromatic tuning. <laughs> find yep some some notes needed adjustment but well within well within reason and indicating a perfectly fine read I do that at a very average volume as well I'm not trying to stress the read out I just want to see where it's sitting so now I'm gonna roll right into long tones and I'm going to start in that bottom octave again towards the end of um, last week I was really digging into my top octave long tones wherein I realized, if you recall, that I discovered that my core was completely unengaged. So I'm gonna start with my uh, bottom octave long tones, 16 beats, quarter note equals 60, eight beat crescendo and an eight beat diminuendo. For those who've been following the series, you know that I'm working to rebuild my endurance and strength in my cardiorespiratory area which has been a lot of just trying to uh, really expand my ribcage to allow my lungs to fill, which has been really challenging. So I got to just beyond about nine beats at, at the end of last week, which was wonderful. And so it'll be interesting to see where I am today. But of course the goal is to do a 16 beat. And so hopefully I'll get at least nine beats on the crescendo side before stopping breathing and then doing eight beats on the diminuendo side. But let's see how this goes. <laughs> So I got straight solid into the nine. Again, my attacks are really not where I want them to be, but in the hierarchy of recovery and rebuilding, I'm, I'm letting go of some bad attacks so I can really just focus on 
the expansion and the filling and the endurance of my respiratory system. about that well I'm getting a good I'm pretty sure that was 12 solid beats through the long tone exercise uh, my pitch is really unstable as I'm doing the diminuendo but again I I feel like I really just want to celebrate getting 12 beats into that because that is such a huge improvement from when I started this you know almost two weeks ago now so that's really great but B flat for me is uh, pretty it's, it's not very resistant B natural is a bit more resistant, so interesting to see how it goes on the B natural. When I don't get a clean attack, I definitely lose air through the re-articulation process, so that makes a huge difference. When you can get a nice clean attack, you definitely um, can be more efficient with your air stream. So that's a, an important reminder as well in this process. If you are not getting clean attacks, you're losing some efficiency of air there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some more notes. I'm gonna spend about 10 minutes altogether on these long tones. So um, I'm gonna move on to major scales. Now I have a student, a brand new student who is starting fresh and I'm actually going to have him link into this and play his scales with me. So I've got my metronome on 60. So here's B flat, we'll just do two octaves. again and really watch my thumb. And for now, if you hold down the flick keys, that's totally fine. Eventually we'll get into habit of just flicking them at the start of the note. But for right now, you can go ahead and hold your thumb down on those keys. Let's do C major, just two octaves. Do F major two octaves. G major. Make sure when you play F sharp, that gets a nice half hole. That's going to change the octave. And it has to be the right half hole. If it's not quite right, it growls. I'm going to try and get the growl for you. It's kind of in there. And the G as well. Make sure the G also gets a half hole so it pops the octave. And we're going to put down the E flat pinky key on the G. It just helps to bring the pitch down because that G tends to be a little bit sharp. So the low G, no E flat key. But the high G, we half hole and we put down that E flat key. 
So here's the whole scale again for G. Now let's do E flat. Let's do D major, also just two octaves. all the keys I gave you. Okay, so there you have it. You've, you can play right along with me. You can repeat that and pause it and go back and look. Um, but flicking, big thing this week. And then also half holding on your G and your F sharp for those keys. So key of G and key of D. Make sure that F sharp is half hold and the G. The higher G gets that E flat pinky key to help lower the pitch a little bit because that, that note always tends to be a little bit sharp. Okay. Now, let me get back to my own scale etudes. I'm going to keep um, 60, except I'm going to do 16th notes and slurred all my major scales. And I'm adding in muscle confusion, so I'm going to start in the key of A and work my way chromatically down the scale. <laughs> Starting the high and F were a little sketchy, but <laughs> I got there. in that D. I'm going to do that again. Alright, keeping with muscle confusion, I'm now going to attempt to do my harmonic minor scales from the top, starting on A, chromatically moving through the skis, keys. <laughs> And trying not to unravel myself mentally as I do this tonight. So I really just I want to focus right now because of um, what happened last week with getting frustrated and then getting tense and then getting more tense and more frustrated. I want to just mentally give myself permission to play a lot of wrong notes and just to enjoy the process of creating new synapse connections in my brain as I do something different. I change up my routine and my patterns. <laughs> Thank you. 
less wrong notes, but mentally I forgave myself so I could just um, kind of dig into the process of thinking through uh, new patterns to make those connections without beating myself up in the process, which is a big part of practicing. Let's talk about that. So much of practicing is realizing and finding all the things that you can't do well and then giving yourself time and space and affirmation to let the things be wrong so that you can then fix them. We can't just go into a practice room and nail everything or else we're not going to accomplish anything. So forgiving ourselves, and then digging into the process to just fix things without attaching unnecessary guilt is a big part of this. Now it's time to go on to melodic minor. This really unhinged me last week. Um, so hopefully this week I can just give myself some grace and some mercy as I create these new connections in my brain. Okay, so that went a lot faster. I worked myself through things a lot faster. Uh, I did not do it with a metronome. I just wanted to just focus on like, of, of just being present for picking the right notes, for playing the right notes. Um, but it went better and I didn't get all tensed up and frustrated. So that's really, really good. I'm going to move up to 90 this week. I think I can do this. to listen back to this because I feel like my pitch is not clean on these thirds and I also feel like my tone is not settled within the nut or the core of the note I feel like I'm kind of floating on top which makes sense because pitch and tone go together you always have the most open tone when your pitch is right on so if your pitch is sitting high that's why it usually feels like your tone is also not quite free and open Read minutes later. <laughs>
keys. Um, has some rough transitions. G flat. Wow, just everything going in and out of the G flat and the A flat. It's really unclean. Um, D major again around that F sharp. So really specific areas that I just need to hone in on. My my, you know, top fourth of my bassoon. So that high C to I F. Still just trying to get my fingers to the right place and have the reed respond. It's not going very well. Some things were better. Something it just fell easier. I'm at a, a much faster tempo. I was at 80 last week. I'm at 90 this week. I was just kind of processing things a little bit faster, but um, so there's a lot of halts, kind of stopping. Um, but this is a good tempo, definitely for this week for a while. <laughs> Thank you. 
technical challenges, of course. When I, and, and when I just don't think, when, I, when I'm not being careful, I simply do not coordinate my finger movements quickly enough. That's the issue is that if I'm not really careful, then I move too slowly rather than moving quickly and at the same time. Uh, second was a lot of halting, a lot of halting in the pattern to keep track of basically what notes I needed to be playing. So um, clearly not comfortable with that, but in many ways, much better than last week. So that's really, really good. A lot of this I'm doing for intonation and not even so much intonation in the holistic sense, but really ear training, making sure that I am hearing the interval right. And it's amazing how often I'm not, um, I'm not, dim I'm not, I'm not hearing the interval correctly in my head. Therefore, I'm also not playing it in tune. So that this is more for me an ear training exercise to make sure that I'm hearing those intervals correctly. <laughs> for me to hear and watch I can I felt my corner starting to go into a smile uh, which always tells me my embouchure is pretty done and it's pretty late in the evening so um, I got through what I really wanted to get through I got through my fundamentals and yeah I mean there's definitely progress and there's definitely a lot of work to be done so I have a very clear direction for tomorrow and the rest of the week but mostly I'm just going to express gratitude for the opportunity to practice today and to improve. Thanks for watching if you made it this far, and I'll see you tomorrow.